What's up, champions? Welcome back to Jet Surfing Nation, your place where we test and review different jet boards and e foils. And sometimes we also test very cool do it yourself projects. Today is one of those days. I welcome Toby. He came all the way from Germany to share with us his new build that he also posted on Fall Zone. Welcome, Toby. Thank you. Welcome, Mike. So, how you find Portugal and how you got to the foiling? Well, it's amazing. Portugal is such a paradise. I would love to have my foil here. Unfortunately, I had to leave it back home. But uh, I can already picture myself being out there on these waves. And using a foil assist system here on these waves will be just perfect. So first, uh, you come from the engineering background, so you've been doing and building your own drones. Tell me your backstory a little bit so people understand your experience with engineering. So for many years I've been uh, yeah, with uh, drones back in the day before um, those commercial drones came out where you couldn't, like anybody could fly. I was doing FPV and building myself the drones. And at some point I got into uh, more like surfing and I realized there's these really nice e-foils. And I started then uh, to get myself into the topic of eFoils and I found this amazing forum, which is eFoil Builders or Foil.Zone. And uh, I've read it and read and read through all the topics and all the different builds. Yeah, and since uh, three years I've built many boards and uh, now I'm building the sixth eFoil actually. And uh, yeah, I had this idea of maybe a way lighter board, a way lighter setup. And there came the idea of this uh, assist drive. For, for a foil and uh, yeah I've got myself into that also, uh, as well as there's a lot of people who are doing these systems now that are much lighter that uh, is much easier to to build yourself because you don't need to uh, build a, a space in the board you know the battery is much smaller uh, you don't need so much knowledge about all these electronic details and of course also it's a lot cheaper yeah as you know I'm a big fan of motorized foiling so I've been using systems like foil drive to let me uh, motorize my existing foiling gear. So I think it's very important for people who already have different boards, different foils, to have this kind of system. That's exactly what you do. Your system is quite light. What's the weight of your setup? So in total, this uh, last system that I've built um, is 11.3 kilograms, already including the board and already including the foil. Um, the board itself and the foil varies because you can have a bigger board, you can have a more heavy e foil, uh, more heavy foil under the board. But uh, yeah, if you want the, the stronger system that helps you to get out of the water, even you or me, uh, that we are a little bit taller, a little bit more heavy, you need the stronger system. And the stronger system requires a little bit bigger battery. Um, but all the other parts are the same to a normal foil assist. Um, the motor is the same, um, the housing is the same, and uh, yeah, I think it could be like literally t around 10 kilograms would be probably the most minimum that you could reach. Mm -hmm. And you've been riding even on the flat lakes and the uh, flat river in Berlin, and even you were able to stand up and lift up with a small board, right? Yes. So the board right now is uh, a 3.6 three, a three a slingshot dwarf craft. Um, and it has 20 liters, about 19 liters something. It's incredibly small board. Uh, when I lie on the board, it's completely submerged under the water. Um, and yeah, this system has enough power to really get me going and so I can stand up and use it as an e-foil. And I primarily built this uh, because I wanted to learn foil pumping. So mm -hmm. I have a dock directly by the river where I uh, tried the wake thief method of kind of running and then jumping on the board but it's so difficult to get everything, the choreography, really right that you land on the perfect spot and then you start pumping. It's a really steep learning curve. So that's why my friend Eros, uh, that you know as well, he had this idea of using the stronger uh, assist for getting out of the water on this very small board and then to place the motor not that much far down, use it as an efoil, but like somewhere in the middle or somewhere more up. And then when once you have the speed of the board, then you really get into the pumping. You get the motor out of the water and then you start pumping and this is how I'm learning the pumping right now. Yeah, and you're quite a big man, you're almost 90, right? I'm 90 kilos, yeah, 187 centimeters, so... So finally the foiling is accessible to big heavy guys, not only those sporty, very short 
guys, right? Exactly, and also like the smaller boards, yeah? Because I wouldn't be able to ride such a small board if I wouldn't have this system. Yeah, exactly. So for people who want to build their own uh, do-it-yourself build, let's get a little bit into technical details so they might be interested. Let's cover like step by step, maybe starting like with the motor, what, which one you use, so then the speed controller, the battery, just some technical details for people about your last build. Yeah. So actually it's not that difficult uh, to build that yourself if you decided so. Of course you need some tools, uh, it's always handy if you have a little bit of background in electronics. Uh, it never hurts. Um, and the motor, it's, uh, the motor is called uh, 6384, um, so it's 63 uh, millimeters in diameter and 84 millimeters long. Um, there's also a 6374, but the 84 is a little bit stronger, so I decided for that one since I'm a little bit more heavy. Um, you can get that um, on AliExpress for about like 100 euros um, and then you of course need a controller which is basically the computer, the heart of the board so to say. The controller I'm using a um, Fly Dragon uh, 150 amps, it can go up until 12 um, S, so it's a high voltage system. Um, I'm using it with, uh, with the 8S battery, but I could use it also with the 12S battery to have even more power, but I found that 8S is already enough for me. Battery configuration is the next thing, uh, which is very important. It is uh, called 8S and 3P, so it's 8 uh, cells in series and 3 cells in parallel um, that make it really, really good for the battery also to stay cool and not to get too hot uh, because I'm drawing a lot of amps, I'm drawing a lot of electricity from this battery. And yeah, on top of that, of course, I need the controller. Um, yeah, I'm using the normal Maytag controller. And the last thing that I need is the housing. So I'm using uh, just a generic uh, plastic housing with a transparent lid so I can see if there's water inside and that's it. So your, your box is on top of the board, similar to foil drive system, yeah? And then you have cable coming through the board or yeah. behind it, yeah? Yeah. So I've decided in my case, because I've built so many e-foils that it might be better uh, to put the box inside the board. This is not necessary, um, but I have the tools and I decided to uh, cut a piece out from the board so the box goes really inside the board, um, especially because I wanted the box to be central in the board for the weight distribution um, and not in the front because on such a small board, if you have a box there in the middle of the board, it's always kind of like in the way, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I've put it inside the board. Um, basically, I've cut out uh, a piece from the board and I made um, with epoxy. I made it. I made it sealed again so the water doesn't go inside the board. And like this, it's uh, the only the only um, downside of this build is that you need an antenna, uh, which goes to the front of the board because as I'm lying on the board while starting, my body shields the the signal. So I had an external antenna which goes to the top of the, the board, so I have really good reception. Even if the board is like 20 centimeters underwater, I still have good reception. Very good. And it, technically speaking, what was your main challenge in, in your previous uh, five or six builds that you mentioned that didn't work so well? What were your main mistakes, I would say? <laughs> there have been many. I mean, there's, uh, it is, it is, uh, there, there is so many things that could go wrong. I had water in grass and I killed uh, a few controllers. Uh, one of my motors um, uh, broke um, while riding as well, it was too much current, I don't know what happened exactly, but it burned. So there was expensive lessons as well that I've learned. Um, some of the controllers died, yeah? as we all know these controllers are not the, so the handheld controllers are not the highest of quality. Um, but yeah, the main challenge I think, which also I pushed the furthest when I was building my first e-foil was the battery. because. The battery is always a thing that was for me kind of like, you know, it's dangerous. You have a lot of lithium ion cells that, uh, that can go wrong. You know, if you don't follow a, a good, a good uh, guidelines, uh, you could burn down your house. I have seen several uh, pictures of people who had really big problems with their batteries. Even the commercial brands, they have problems with the batteries. So, um, yeah, this is something that I kept for the very last of my builds when I was really comfortable with dealing all of this and of course then I, I took a lot of time and I did it really nicely. Mm -hmm. So to summarize how expensive was your whole build? It's a most common question. If we put together like average kind of uh, board, foil board, mast and then your components, what was the summary? So yeah, it is, uh, it's not as an easy question to answer because of course it depends a lot on which board you use and which foil you use. You could go for very high expensive 
uh, uh, boards um, or you could go also the cheaper way uh, if you use uh, used equipment you could go for as low as like a thousand euros or thousand five hundred euros for the mast including the foil and the board and for the electronic compo uh, components from my assist drive um, yeah the motor as i already said is like a hundred euros the controller is like a hundred euros um, the handheld controller is like 100 euros and the battery is 24 cells each 4 euros so it's also like around 100 euros of course you need charge and everything on top but more or less like for, for getting you ready it's about 400 some material of course you need connectors and uh, some tools around 400 450 euros i would say and you're ready to go mm -hmm. so total what was the total again total was again like i would say if you have a used board a used foil used mast uh, for let's say a thousand or thousand five hundred euros plus uh, the equipment uh, to buy most of it you can get from aliexpress it's around like 2000 euros mm -hmm. yes yeah, that's pretty good number and of course uh, making their own do it yourself built and not for everyone and guys like me who have no engineering background we just prefer to buy a ready system luckily they are available finally on the market before it was only full zone guys who could access this amazing lightweight builds but for guys who are like you and they are looking into building their own build what are your final words of inspiration for them what they should pay attention first and like what main issues to avoid I would say that uh, if you uh, plan on building some board yourself, you should really take it easy. You should invest a lot of time in research uh, and read about because there's a lot of specific things that you need to take into account. You need to waterproof the motor. You need to make sure that your housing is completely waterproof, especially here in Portugal. If you go out on the salt water, you're going to destroy your equipment with uh, no seconds. You know, like you're going to be uh, just having hassle all the time. So really doing thorough research, really getting your mind in to this and uh, of course what helped me a lot and what I would advise anybody to do is like to go on the forum to read through all these posts of like hundreds and hundreds of people who have successfully built their own systems to get ideas that's what I did and then I, I picked so that I did the cherry picking I said like I really like how this guy built the motor I really like how this guy built the battery and I really like this board and how the, how the guy built the board so this is how basically I then cherry picked all the nice things together and then I decided, okay, I want to go this, this route. Perfect. So you mentioned one more very important point about the waterproofing. So what are your tips for people who are building on waterproofing the battery and the motor as well? Um, so first of all, of course, the main importance is that the compartment where all the electronics uh, is inside is waterproof. This is the most important thing because if you have water coming into this compartment, your battery is going to suffer and also your motor controller is going to suffer. This part alone is already 200 euros together. So uh, this is the most important thing to make that really sealed and to try that out before. Like to not uh, just build a system, go into the water and realize that you have water coming in there and then mm -hmm. you're basically screwed. So. Uh, really taking time and um, after building the box to go in the water, do some testing to see if it's waterproof or not. And yeah, the motor also has to be waterproofed, especially if you go to the salt water. Uh, the motor, as I said, is 6384. Uh, it comes with uh, bearings that are not really good, so you have to change them for stainless steel bearings, for instance. Um, and as well, you have to epoxy coat uh, the windings. Uh, so these windings inside the motor, uh, it's better if they uh, if they are have a layer of epoxy around them, so they won't start to rust, especially if you go foiling in the salt water. All right. So I hope uh, you guys find this advice helpful, and of course, you can find more information in uh, Toby's topic on foil zone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. If you feel inspired, you go for it because it's amazing to build this yourself. Um, if you have the time to do so, I really enjoyed this project and thank you very much Mike for inviting me to Portugal. Thank you, so that's all for today and I hope in summer we'll be able to try your build and get some waves together. So thank you so much for coming Toby. Thank you yeah. Mike, thank yeah. you. Take care guys, cheers. Bye bye. bye.